Rushers, yeah. Reggie <laughs> yeah. Just curious, um, what you thought of Carry On? Did yeah. you watch that game? I did watch the game, and uh, I was excited. You know, I was excited to finally see that there was a 100-yard rusher. Um, you know, with him and Legarrette Blunt. Um, and Theo still there was, was still there. Is he still there? Mm -hmm. He's still still there. Um, you know, I was just excited to see that you know there was a production you know from the running from the backfield um, because you know it'd been too long. You know what I mean? It should, that record should have never lasted that long. Um, you know, but I, I think you know Detroit has a good backfield. Um, you know, and, and they have a bright future, especially with guys like Carry On Johnson. So, I was excited to see him. You know, break the record, get 100 yards. Um, now I want to see more of it consistently. Why, why so. did it last? Why, why did it take so long for him to get 100 yards? I don't know, because it's not that hard. <laughs> Honestly, it's not that hard to rush for 100 yards. You know, I think. You got to have a coaching staff that believes in the run game. Um, you got to have an offense coordinator that's patient enough to um, to believe in the run game because it's not sexy to see a running back rush for four yards or for three yards, right? But in the long run, it's effective. And I think we see teams like the Patriots and the uh, Rams who do a great job with that, running the football and then staying patient with it. Um, I thought Sean McVay got away from it at a you know about halfway through the season. I think it started with the the Chiefs game uh, got away from running the football, uh, but with C.J. Anderson and Todd Gurley now, you see him getting back to that, um, and it's effective. Uh, and again, like I said, it's not sexy to see a running back rush for you know three or four yards, but in the long run, it helps you chew up time of possession. Um, it takes pressure off the quarterback, um, and the play action it opens up the play action game as well. What do you, what do you think of Carry On specifically? Yeah, I, I like what I see. Honestly, I like what I've seen from him. Um, I, I think again, I think they have a bright future with a guy like him. Um, he's played extremely well for him, you know, throughout the season. Uh, but again, like I said, I want to see more consistently, you know, consistently running the football. And I think Matt Patricia is the right coach for that. You know, coming from the Patriots system where they like to run the football a lot. Um, you know, so I think you know he's in the right. He was with the right coach. Yeah, just as one so close to the Saints, what was it like yeah. for you watching that NFC title? It was tough. You know, it was it was it was a heartbreaker of a moment um, to see him lose like that in that fashion. Um, you know, you just you never want to see a game decided like that, especially of that magnitude. Um, but I, I too often we're seeing now games are more and more decided by referees, decided by, you know, penalties. And it shouldn't be that way. Um, you know, players put too much on the line every year. Going back to mini camp, OTAs, training camp, um, you put your body on the line, uh, your family's relationships kind of take a backseat to football. Um, you know, I would spend all day at the facility. You know, I wouldn't get home. I would leave when it was dark in the morning, and I would get home when it was dark. You know, so usually my kids would be asleep. Um, you know, and, and uh, other guys have different situations when they go home, but I just think players sacrifice way too much to allow a game to be decided like that. And again, like I said, we're seeing more more games decided by penalties, and it, it shouldn't be that way. Sorry, were you at that game? I was at the game, yeah. 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 What did you guys play in the moment? I, I thought... I thought it was a pass interference. I mean, seeing it live, I thought it was pass interference. But not only was it pass interference, it was helmet to helmet. You know what I mean? So there's two calls that were missed there um, that you just can't, that can't happen. You know what I mean? It's these you professional NFL referees. Um, two referees are looking at it right there, standing looking at it. Um, you know, there's there's no there's absolutely no reason that you can justify your mind why they wouldn't at least call one of those, right? Pass interference or helmet to helmet. And then have you reached out to Drew or anyone else who's been talking to them since then? Um, yeah, I've spoken to a lot of guys. You know, obviously a lot of guys are frustrated, you know, um, because, you know, that because of the way the game played out. And again, because of, you know, these are two teams who are fighting hard, right, to win a football game. Um, two teams who have, you know, done a great job to get to that point. Um, and, and again, you know, if, if it were the, it could be anybody. I would have said the same. I would say the same thing. You know, I know this is, it's a former team I used to play for, but um, you know, and it hurt a little more because of that. Because I'm vested into that team, into that city. But it could be any team. It didn't matter who that was. Um, you know, the referee's got to make that call. You can't miss that. 
uh, of a game of that magnitude, um, you got to make that call. So what you player is your to respond? Sorry. Sorry. How hard is it to respond to something like that as a player? You know, to come back next year and say it's tough. It's hard because when you the Saints, I don't know if anybody suffered. You know more heartbreaking losses, you know, back to back years in the Saints. You know, so it's it's tough to get back to that position. And and the fact that they were able to get back, they were get to the NFC Championship game after suffering such a devastating loss the year before against Minnesota, I think speaks volumes to the the leadership that they have on their team, um, and it speaks volumes to the leadership that the Rams have on their team, uh, because ultimately. It's tough to get back to that spot. I know the Patriots kind of make it look easy, and and we kind of um, it's almost become routine for us to see them in this in those positions year in and year out. But it's not easy. It's tough as hell. What do you think the, the rules should change? Do you think that coaches should be able to challenge? Passion? Yeah, I, we talked about this um, a week ago on Total Access, and I think you should be able to challenge any play, any call, um, but you should only be given the two. Um, the challenge flags per, per half, and you can use it as you want, on whatever you want. Um, you know, so I think that could be a possible solution, but we got to figure out a better way to not allow games to get decided like that. What was worse, that or the way that you guys lost 2014 playoffs and threw the flag and pick it up? Are you talking about the Detroit game? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that was another one, right? Um, where just an, another missed call, missed opportunity, where, you know, referees. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know what what they're looking at sometimes. You know, it's like <laughs> when you it when you have that like thrown and pick it up, not to, and to not have it thrown at all. <laughs> no, I, I, they both suck. <laughs> you know, they both. <laughs> you, you know, you don't want to have to go through either one of them, right? But uh, again, I just think there needs to be referees either got to be held accountable or there needs to be some way where coaches can challenge these plays, these non-calls, or these calls where they're picking up flags, um, you know, stuff like that. Reggie, what do you think of the current state of the running back? Of course, we, you were effective uh, running the ball as well as receiving the ball. Yeah. A few years ago, we had different media outlets, different reporters saying the running back position was dead, it's moving to a passing league. Yep. But you see cats like Todd Gurley, of course. Yeah. The New England Patriots running game has been stellar in the postseason. Mm -hmm. Rookie mm -hmm. Saquon Barkley. There's mm -hmm. a lot of talented running backs mm -hmm. who are also doing things receiving and rushing. So okay. what are your thoughts on the current state of the running back? And do you did you feel like when, when people were saying that the running back position was dead, that that was true? Um, I th the, w the running back position was watered down for sure uh, because, um, you know, when I first got into the league, um, you know, they wanted bigger running backs. They wanted a really big running back um, and a, a smaller running back. And, but it was still more of a bigger running back um, league. And then it kind of transitioned now to where you're seeing uh, teams go to the smaller running back who can do a lot of different things, right? And so the Patriots do that. Um, Kansas City Chiefs, um, you know, there's a lot of teams that are now going to these smaller running backs. So to me, I like the direction that the, that the, back, the running back position is headed um, because it's tailored more towards guys like me, you know, guys who can, you know, be split out wide, um, who can be mismatched on linebackers. Um, you know, I made a career, I made a living off of that, you know, off of, you know, being mismatched on linebackers or safeties or, or whatever it was. And so I think, you know, playing for Sean Payton, I thought he was one of the best at doing that, at creating mismatches, um, you know, for, for his players. And you see him still doing that with Kamara, um, getting him out in space um, on linebackers or, or allowing him to run the football and just using him a lot of different ways. And what that really does is it, it, it makes it tough on defenses because when you have a Kamara and you have a Mark Ingram, well, you got to tackle those guys differently. Right, you got to prepare for those guys differently, um, you know. And so, you know, I, I like the direction of the running back is going. Position. I love what I see. Um, I think he doesn't get enough credit credit for how tough he is and how um, many tackles hit he breaks. He breaks a lot of tackles, and you know he's able to twist his body in certain ways. It's almost like Gumby, like guys just fall <laughs> off of him. You know what I mean? And so. Um, I love what he brings to the table because he's always even kill. He's never too high, never too low. Um, the moment is never too big for him. And, um, you know, you need players like that. You know, when everything around you is moving extremely fast, 
um, you know, when things are kind of chaotic and going crazy, you need players like that are just going to be the same no matter what. And people obviously want to make comparisons all the time. Yeah. So do you see him? I, I see a lot, but also I think he's a better runner early in his career than I was. Um, you know, it took me time to to adjust. Um, you know, to the running style of the NFL. Uh, thank God I had guys like Deuce McAllister, you know, in front of me to kind of help me, um, guide me and navigate, you know, through my first couple years in the league. But also, Kamara has a better offensive line than I had when I got into the league, you know. So, not that, you know, that, um, you know, th not that that makes him any better or worse than me, but, um, you know, he has a good team around him right now. He has a good system. Um, he has a, you know, I, that was Sean Payton's rookie year. My, my was my rookie year, you know. So he was still learning a lot about himself and about how to call plays in this league, especially as a head coach. You think of some uh, Sony Michelle when you see yeah. Sony Michelle play. What do you like about this game? I liked him coming out of college. You know, I loved, I liked how tough he ran. Um, you know, with him and Nick Chubb in that backfield together, they were a monster. You know, so watching them in college at Georgia, I thought they were special. Um, you know, I thought that both of them had an opportunity to go out and be great running backs in this league, and we're seeing that, right? Nick Chubb been played great this year. Sonny Michelle is in the Super Bowl right now. He's been playing great this year for him. You know, so um, I just I like what I've seen on him. He runs tough, runs physical. He's a great player. And, um, you know, I think he's going to be a huge factor in this game. Crazy. Of course, this, this guy Sorry. is still in the contract with the Pittsburgh Steelers, but if Le'Veon Bell's time is up in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. and he does move on to another organization, what systems or what organization do you think would be a great fit for Bell? Eagles. Uh, I think the Philadelphia Eagles need a running back. Um, they could use Le'Veon Bell. Um, that'd be a great landing spot for him. The Colts, they could use uh, another running back. I know they got Marlon Mack over there. He's been doing a great job. But, um, you know, I want to see Le'Veon Bell go to a team where, for one, they have a good quarterback so they can get him the football out in space, throw him the football, because he is a factor in the passing game. Uh, he can't line up out, out wide as a receiver um, and, and, you know, run a lot of different routes. You know, so his, he has a bag full of tools that I feel like are very special and um, make him very dangerous. Thank you. Hey, Reggie, uh, excuse me, Rick,